Hello everyone, let's go. Welcome to the video series on Go programming language and this is the first video where we are gonna write our first Go language code and understand the basics of Go language. Now before you can start writing, you need to of course go ahead and download Go and install it in your system. You have to go to golang.org. It has lots of things including the documents. In the course of this video, I will also tell you how to look into the documents. Now, if you click download Go, this page will open and you can download Go language installer based on your operating system, Windows, Mac OS or Linux. You will also get a source code of Go. Okay, Go is open source. Now, if you do not want to install those things immediately or for some reason you can't do it right now, you can just open Go Playground and start writing your code over here. No need to wait for anything, no need to wait for any installation. Just write play.golang.org and you have a playground. You can write your code over here and you can just, you know, copy paste and save it in your local files. Okay. So to learn Go language, there is no limitation or restriction. Having said that, let's go ahead and write our first code in Go. I am using Visual Studio code, which is a free IDE. Okay. And we are going to write our first code over here. So first and foremost, the extension of any Go source code is .go. Just like for C, it is .c, for Python, .py, .java, .cpp. Go language files are with .go syntax. Okay. So I have created this file called firstcode.go. Now, very, very important thing. Whenever we start learning a language, we do many serious mistakes and because of which we lose interest in learning that language. And in this video, I am going to tell you what are the serious mistakes we should not do. In fact, we must not do so that, you know, we understand the language, understand its constructs and, you know, learn it so that we can make use of it. So even before we go ahead and write our first line of code, let me tell you one mistake which you must avoid. There will be things which you will not understand right now. Okay. And the topic of this video is to make sure that we understand variables in Go language, nothing else. So if there are things which you will not understand now, just remember it. Just like you used to remember before giving your, you know, academics examination, your school college examinations, right? We do not understand everything, but we remember it so that, you know, we can write the answer. Just follow the same practice over here. Believe me, over a period of time, over the period of this school and video series, we will understand everything. But if we try to overcomplicate the topic of each and every video, it is going to be difficult for all of you. Because in this particular video, I'm going to talk about, you know, variables in an extremely simple way so that you can understand you don't need to remember things okay you will understand it clearly so bear with me for some time and understand some things which i want you to understand in this video and rest of the things if it doesn't make sense to you just remember it for time being okay so let's go ahead and write our first code so my file is firstcode.go okay let me remove this so every file in Go language belong to a package. So let me write package main. Okay. Remember it. There is a package called main. Okay. And we will have to import a input output library called FMT in case of Go. Just consider as hash include IO stream for C++ or hash include studio.h for C. Okay. Now, just like C or C++, it has a main function, the entry point function of the Go language code. And we define function by using a keyword called func, F-U-N-C. I am saying func main. This is my function. That's all. Okay. Now, you can see that in FMT, there is some, you know, error sign is there or, you know, warning sign is there. It says that you have imported something, but you are not using it which means that I have to use it. So in here, you know, compiler tells me that you have to use FMT. I will use FMT as FMT dot print ln print with new line. I will say let's go. Okay. So this is my very first 
go language code okay and this code will work and run now before going ahead and running your code you need to create go modules okay again remember it for the time being i will talk about it later so in here my file name is firstcode.go you will have to say go mod in it first code okay since it is already there in my system it is saying it already exists and after that you want to run this particular code you will say go run you know first code and you will see let's go printed over here okay and i will now run the code from the id itself by pressing ctrl f5 so you can see let's go is printed over here congratulations you have created your first go language code now important thing what we understood is that function is created by keyword called fun in the languages like you know c or c++ we used to write a name and if we use curly bracket which means it is a function and we give return types but in go function has to be created by giving this keyword called func fun and if you are from c language there is something called printf which is very similar to you know your c language let's say i say percentage s and my name over here okay and if i go ahead and run this you can see let's go that okay similarly you can give percentage d and if i say percentage capital t it will tell me the type of this particular that which is string now type go language is a strictly type language which means that each and every variable you define will have a type type means what type it is it is integer type or a string type okay so now let me create a function where i will tell you how to define variables and assign type to it and i will tell you one very simple thing about types okay in all programming languages we were learning types in a totally wrong way we should not do that over here so first let me declare a function called func uh, let's say dec var because of variables and this is my function and i am going to call it from here from my main function okay dec var good i am going to call this function over here now about types whenever we learn about types in any programming language people say there are multiple types there are you know boolean types byte types 8 bit 16 bit integer you know floating point 64 or uh, 32 string type many other types and we keep on remembering all those things don't do that in general there are only two types of variables as far as your program goes your go language code goes there are only two types of variables okay one is number another is string even boolean like true false consider them as number only because one zero we can consider them so there are only two types of variables you can create in any programming language string type number type don't confuse yourself okay now in go language there are multiple ways to create a variable first is declare and assign so let me create a number variable i'll say num colon equal to 100 okay and let me create a string variable i'll say str colon equal to let's say name okay now it will show error over here just because i am not using it let me use it i'll say fmt dot println i will use num comma uh, let's me put some space and comma str okay now if i go ahead and run this you can see come on 100 and name over here okay now this syntax colon and equal to called declare and assign which means that declare the variable number and assign the value 100 to it declare a variable called str and assign a value uh name to it okay and if we go ahead and print the type of it so i'll say fmt dot you know print if i'll say you know num equal to percentage capital t and str is equal to percentage uh 
capital T backslash n I'll say num I'll say str okay and if I go ahead and run this code you can see that the type is num is int type str is string type okay so any variable you create it will have a type in it and this is the most common syntax within a function where we will declare and assign a variable okay colon equal to declare and assign so in here you do not need to explicitly mention the type of the variable okay if we don't want to use this you know declare and assign colon equal to we can say var num equal to 100 or where where it's for variable str equal to name here also you will get same output you know num is in str is string now here we are saying that declare a variable called num declare a variable called str okay and you know now you have realized that why this is a better syntax because we don't need to uh, type var over here okay var means variable every variable you define in go it starts with var okay now till here we have seen that the variable types are assigned automatically right num is integer str is string we are not mentioning anywhere but we can mention type in go language also so here is what we will do we will say var num same thing okay now in go language the syntax is that the type comes at the end at the right side at the later part unlike c or c plus plus or java where the type comes before we will say var num int okay now when i am typing int int is a number type and you can see there are different variation of number 16 32 64 8 all those things and u int corresponding to that okay so never ever get confused with types okay you don't need to remember everything you know what are the general types you know one different type of integer different type of floating points and a boolean all of them are number and the other type is a string type and which can be also treated as a character type if there is only one character so in here i'll say int and after that i'll say num equal to 100 now it will be normal assignment the end result will be same okay you can see that num is int str is string okay so this is the way you define a variable in go language it is very very important to understand how we can define a variable in go language now similarly you can define a floating point type variable i'll say flt uh, let's say float 32 okay or you can say variable bl called bool bool okay or bl as byte okay byte is also you know it's integer okay or you can use a string okay so always remember there are two types of variables string or rather say it numerical and non-numerical that's all okay and there are different types in numerical and non-numerical have couple of types okay so all confusion goes away now another thing this thing you may not use all the time but there are chances that you might need global variables right so how to define global variables we cannot define global variables as declare and assign this is wrong this will not work this can only work within a function if you are defining global variable you have to say var global equal to 100 this is the only way to define a global variable or you can say var global int okay and you can use this global anywhere in your program but as a general practice you just need to know about this may not need to use it okay because if you want to use something interthread and go has excellent mechanism for that and we are going to talk about that in some later videos okay so this is how you define your variable now can you guess the difference i am not putting any semicolon in this code i can put that right over here and over here but unfortunately as soon as i save my file all the semicolon goes away okay so you don't need semicolon in go programming language okay now what about function return type just like you know variable variable name and return type in function also we put return type towards the right we can say int and from here we can say 
uh, return 200 okay this code will work okay so variable and functions are defined in go in such a way where the function or variable you have to tell in the beginning of the line what you want to create then you create either function and variable and then you put the type of it okay now there is one more difference with c or c plus plus in main you cannot have a type or you know return value from it okay this is not allowed in go because you should not return anything from your main uh, function it is not gonna show right now but if we go ahead and run we will get an error and it will say that if we see the error function main must have no arguments and no return types okay so we can't have it in main but we can have it in other functions okay so this is the way we define a variable we define a function we define variable types okay and assign the value so there are two types declare and assign global with return types okay so that's all for this video just play around with you know different types of variable and try to assign different different values print some of them use printf use println get your hands onto this with this limited amount of information believe me once you get a hold on this the future journey is going to be very very easy thank you all thanks for watching we will meet again until the next time we meet good day goodbye you take care